Hello guys and welcome to a new video of New in Britain. I hope that you're having a good day. I am having a really good day. Whoa, so much energy in this channel. So good, so positive. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> we are going to be talking about landlords and how can you find a good one when you're looking for a room or a house. So with all this said now, let's crack on with the video. Have you considered renting a room with a landlord or an agency? Are you scared of renting a room with a landlord? Renting a room with a landlord sometimes can be a little bit intimidating, but guys, don't worry. In this video, we're going to be giving you 10 tricks to find a good landlord and how can you have a good experience while you're living on that house. After running New in Oxford for about 4 years, a charity doing weekly meetups for international people where they can meet people, have fun and speak in English at the same time, I have realized that the main problem that people have when they come to the UK is accommodation. I have seen many horror stories. Some of them, you can see them in the video that we did two weeks ago about the landlords. Have a look at it when you have time. For this reason, some people prefer to pay the extra money and get an agency so they don't have to go through this hassle. However, with agencies you have got the problem that, first of all, you have to pay the agency fee. Secondly, it, you have to go through some checks. These checks are credit check so they can check that you are able to pay and reference check so they can check if you are a good tenant. The problem with this is that if you are not able to pass the credit check you may have to pay accommodation in full for the whole year and if you are not able to get the good references they might not even give you the accommodation at all meaning that you may be paying a bit of money and you lose all of it in one go. So that's the reason why a lot of people prefer to get private landlords. Now, the government is saying that you should be paying 35% of your salary in accommodation. So let's put an example. If you are living in areas such as London, Oxford or Cambridge, you're supposed to be paying that much. That means that if you really want to afford those prices at a 35% salary, you're supposed to be earning those salaries from there. Not many people really do that, because in reality, minimum wage, if you think about it, is going to be here. Not enough to afford an average room. Also, if you ever end up paying for the average room at the average price, you may be wondering that you want to have a room which is really nice, because you are paying quite a lot for it, so you are expecting high quality standards. Some of these rooms, they can be average prices, or even higher than average, and still, you end up having a really bad house because the landlords don't really want to spend money in making the house look better. And you might be thinking then, well, no problem, I'll go for another place. But sometimes, looking for a room is so hard that you end up having to take that one because of there is no other option that you can go to. Or you can have this option, or you have to pay for an Airbnb for a lot more money. For this reason, I wanted to give you 10 reasons that you can use when you're looking for a house because of, if you're dealing with a landlord, you may not know the rules, you may not know what he has to do and then in the end he may end up not even taking care of you. So I hope that this advice will help you to find out if your landlord is good or not, if you're going to take him or not and what can you do if you fall into one of his tricks. The first thing that I wanted to ask you, it is to look if your landlord belongs to any accreditation scheme. I will leave the link below because different area where you are on you will need different accreditation and these things they belong to the UK if you want to find out anything that is from outside of the UK I would recommend you to look as to the council as to different organizations in the area and they can help you with this second and if you're living in the UK you can ask him if he's part of any landlord association such as the national landlord association the regional landlord association or I need to read that one the Guild of Residential Landlords National Scheme, which is the RLA. The third thing that you can do, it is, you can have a look at him online. Take the information, his name, the email, see what you can find online and you can have a look at something about his lifestyle. As well as this, many people, they don't really look at their footprint online, which it is that you may be able to find something that you may not, that he may not want you to know, such as if he has committed a crime, if he's a, a person doing something illegal that he has done and has been caught and put online, you can have a look and see if you want to be living with this person or rent from him. The next thing that you need to do if it's good or not, it's if the house needs to have an HMO license. HMO license stands for House of Multiple Occupiers. If there is a house which has more than two people, you should be having a license as long as those people they are not from the same family. You can look at it online. 
and if he needs one of them, he's supposed to have it hung it in the wall, in the kitchen, in the entrance, or somewhere in the wall visible where you can see it. If he doesn't have that, it means that he may not even have an HMO, he may not even have a license. And do you really want to be living in a house of somebody which is doing things dodgy? If anything happens, are you covered? Speak with him and see how you feel. Ask him for any requirements that you may have and before you sign the tenancy agreement, please have a look that he has changed what you have told him to so you can see if there is anything bigger or any bigger problem happening, if he's gonna repair it or not. Is he giving you a tenancy agreement? If he gives you a tenancy agreement, it means that he's very legit and he's taking everything seriously. If he doesn't do that, it means that it's a different type of rule, it's the street rule, so I would be very careful when you don't have a tenancy agreement. Anything can happen from either side, from your side and from his side. Be careful. Has he given you an inventory with all the stuff that it's in the house? Most of the landlords, when they're renting a house, they would like to know that things that they give you, they are still back in the same place where the landlord gets the house back. So if he doesn't do that, it means that he's not really taking care of his stuff. Hmm, another reason to think about. You might think that this is not very important, but you have to ask if the house is under a mortgage. The reason why is, if you're going to pay in full for the accommodation and he doesn't pay for the mortgage, the bank may ask you to leave the house if the landlord is not paying for his liability. So even though then you pay to him, they can kick you out and you cannot ask him for the money back because he, he, he may be in bankruptcy. Has he given you a deposit scheme? Every landlord has got the obligation that whenever you move into the house, your money should be put into a deposit scheme. If by any means he doesn't put the money into a deposit scheme and there is anything that you're taking him to court, he might be liable for paying up to three times the amounts on the deposit. And finally, I believe that this is the least important thing, but it is always good to know it. The reason why is that your landlord, normally, if he gives you the gas certificate, if your house is using gas, of course, and uh, he is also giving you the electrical certificate, if you are not in an HMO house, then if he doesn't give you these things, he's not allowed to kick you out under any circumstances. Unless you haven't broken the tenancy agreement. If you break the tenancy agreement, yes, he can kick you out because of that. But if you don't break the tenancy agreement, you are safe. Okay guys, I hope that you have liked this video. And now remember, like always, if you can please like the video so that more people in YouTube can see this video and can benefit from it. Secondly, it is if you can comment what you think about it in different countries, in different areas, how is it working in your place, do you have different things in other cities, what is your opinion about this video, write it down below. And finally, most important thing, if you would like to know more videos about people in the UK, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the notification bell just down there. The reason why it is that we will be with you in every single half an hour after we are uploading every video. Thank you very much guys, have a good day and see you next time!